I've generally been enjoying the Orville Season 3 so far, but I'm going to critique one of the themes presented in the third episode, which is called Mortality Paradox. The crew encounter a planet of constantly changing illusions, where they face a series of life-threatening situations. There's some genuine intrigue and some trippy moments in this episode, actually, but ultimately, I have to comment on how it ends, because it kind of bothers me. Spoilers again. Ultimately, it all turns out that an extremely advanced alien race were observing them so as to gain an insight into mortality because these aliens have become immortal. They wished to experience mortality from the perspective of mortal beings. The message at the end of the episode is the usual utopian, atheistic, secular, materialistic philosophy we've seen in lots of science fiction. The idea that biological and natural is somehow flawed and spirituality and belief in God is archaic and primitive. The future is man merging with machines to achieve superiority. That transhumanism is the future of evolution. There was a time when this kind of messaging in a sci-fi show didn't bother me. When I was perhaps more innocent of the political and social agendas being pushed in our society. But these ideas are actually being floated around by technocrats, think tanks, media and academics right now. And science fiction just sort of helps these ideas to take root into the public's consciousness. So this Tron-looking lady alien at the end condescends to the Orville crew in this really obnoxious manner about how evolution stumbles along with trial and error and emerges with a barely adequate excuse for a being. <laughs> there's almost a tone of contempt and disgust in her voice. But there's real smugness. Her species apparently took the reins long ago and learned to guide evolution with greater efficiency. Now, I've covered stories on transhumanism, the merger of man and machine, and that those who push it believe that humanity is something to be surpassed, as if we are flawed from birth and in need of a prosthesis to upgrade ourselves from our primitive origins, which I find disgusting. Transhumanists are also obsessed with immortality, you know, uploading their consciousness to the singularity or whatever. Now, this alien talks about how great her species is and how inferior the basic biological humanoids are by comparison, but immortality has just rendered her species' existence meaningless because the direction of her species has been motivated by denying the natural law of the universe, that death is part of life. To become an immortal being will eventually become about as meaningful and fulfilling as being an inanimate object. You've done everything, you've seen everything, and yet you still can't die. So what's the point? It sounds like hell to me. She also goes on to push an atheistic globalist vision of the world. When Gordon asks, what's it like, immortality? And she replies, you outgrew your gods and your nations as we did. You left your training wheels behind and made it to the stars. Your next hurdles are really no different. You simply must outgrow self. These abstractions you inhabit, for now, captain, explorer, husband, man, they are irrelevant when you become one with the cosmos. I believe transhumanism has its ideological roots in a lot of communistic, cultural Marxist philosophy. It denies or attempts to conquer biological differences between men and women. Communism is anti-meritocratic, it's anti-competitive, and requires the starting point that human beings are all basically the same, they're interchangeable and infinitely reprogrammable. Quite like transhumanism then, communism is constantly striving for equity outcomes to ensure blanket equality regardless of ability, talent, value, hard work, or just differences between people. Or in the case of gender dynamics, brain sex differences between men and women. Communism and transhumanism are basically religions with the same core objectives. To build utopia, a perfect world. To create heaven on earth. But to do this, every person has to be forced into the same kind of rigid and restrictive system where individuality and personal freedoms are crushed. Otherwise, you can't make everyone equal. Transhumanism is really no different. It just maintains that human beings have to essentially be rebuilt with technology in order to usher in the utopia for all mankind. But the central principle is still totalitarian in nature. Transhumanism tells us that basically borgifying our bodies is going to somehow emancipate us from the limitations of our biology, but in truth, it will just give nefarious powers in this world control over our bodies and our minds, and of course, obliterate our privacy by connecting us 
directly to a centralized digital population control system. Everything you do, everywhere you go, and eventually, with devices inserted into your brain, everything you think will be known by your government. And how long before transhumanism leads to the creation of mind control, an actual Borg hive mind, the ultimate enslavement that turns a person into a zombie? Communism aims to achieve centralized control over everything, the means of production, property, money, etc. Transhumanism can achieve all of these things in a much more direct, efficient, and totalitarian manner thanks to advances in technology. The alien also talks about how they outgrew their nations. This is the one aspect of many sci-fi shows like Star Trek and The Orville, which are very communistic in nature because we saw this with the Soviet Union. Nation states being absorbed into a single transnational identity and individual nations and cultural identities being forcibly absorbed and suppressed to achieve this. Utopian ideologies always require totalitarianism to achieve their aims. Fundamentally, at the core of all of this is the belief that human beings can become their own gods. And of course, I believe it denies the existence of the human soul. This alien being talks about how they outgrew their gods and nations and they must outgrow the self. She says, These abstractions you inhabit for now, captain, explorer, husband, man, they are irrelevant. Yeah, the very things that make you who and what you are. Irrelevant? Yeah, just discard all of that and join the Borg Collective and lose your individuality and therefore your soul. And that's basically what she's proposing. Join the Borg. But it's a kind of a friendly Borg. And we're kind of smug about how superior we are. <laughs> But everything she talks about denies the preciousness and importance of differences and uniqueness and genuine diversity, including the fact that such beauty and preciousness only exists for a short time because people are mortal, thus making them even more important to cherish, which is why mortality matters. A beautiful sunset will eventually end. Day gives way to night. Summer will eventually give way to autumn, which gives way to winter. A beautiful frozen lake will eventually thaw. The lengths of notes and the gaps between them are what make a song. But if you had just one continuous note that went on forever, would that still be a song? Or would it be a really annoying and meaningless noise? Just because something doesn't last forever doesn't make it any less beautiful. In fact, its temporary nature is what makes it so valuable. When she talks about the aspects of what makes a person, in the case of Ed Mercer, captain, explorer, husband, man, she then says, they're all irrelevant. This is just materialistic deconstructionism. Once you break everything down to the sum of its parts, it's all basically shite. Why? This philosophy maintains that the only thing that matters is the material. It's like a person who looks at a gorgeous forest, and they see the majesty and beauty of nature. They think of their ancestors who lived and foraged there. They see the unique world that exists within the forest. But the materialist deconstructionist just looks at the forest and goes, ah, yeah, that's a forest. It's just a concept. You know, it, you need to move past these abstractions. In truth, it's just a bunch of trees packed tightly together. I mean, what is a tree? It's just the state that exists before it gets turned into timber. And all those trees could be leveled so that we can convert all of them into wood for construction and industrial purposes. If we want, we can reduce all of those trees down to an economic value. All of those trees are mortal anyway. They're all going to die. And seen as how mortality is nonsense, then their existence is irrelevant. Also, the land beneath the trees could be converted into high-density housing. Nothing really matters to the deconstructionist, especially not immutable characteristics. So once you become a materialist deconstructionist, it's very easy to enter a relativistic mindset. And it's important that we explore the dangers of looking past immutable characteristics of an individual, for example, because individuals have human rights. For decades, feminism used women as part of a revolutionary process to undermine the family and therefore the society by encouraging them to dispense with motherhood and instead spend their prime fertile years in college and the corporate workplace. Affirmative action programs were introduced to win them over for this process. They were basically bought off by shiny, pretty material things and therefore birth rates declined as a result. The sexes were pitted against each other as opposed to having them collaborate together in the most important way, which is to say building a family and a home. But now it seems the architects of our increasingly dystopian world no longer need women. So they are discarded, right? They're discarding women by redefining what it means to be a woman. If you can ask the question, what is a woman? And a person can't give you a straight answer. There just might be something seriously rotten in your society. 
if a woman or indeed a man can be redefined in a world of transgenderism, then so too can a human being in a world of transhumanism. Human beings have rights and freedoms, but if a human being can be redefined, if the question is asked, what does it mean to be human in the age of transhumanism, then it's no different from those who ask, should we redefine free speech in an age of hate speech? Before too long, the human being's rights are undermined by the process of redefinition. The reality of transhumanism, just like the reality of communism, will be nothing like how it's advertised to people. Under communism, people are told that everyone will own the means of production together, but in reality, the proletariat own nothing. They have no private property rights, and the lack of food and basic necessities, that's a common feature. The state owns everything, and it replaces God in people's lives. Thus, it becomes a kind of religion. Transhumanism will sell people on the idea of becoming a godlike creature with technology-enabled superpowers, but in truth, the person's body will be filled with devices that will be used to track and control the individual so that they become a drone in the machine, like a cow on a farm, branded and tagged livestock. The purpose of transhumanism is to devalue and vandalize human beings at a physical, biological, and even genetic level, so much so that they are lowered to the level of animals, and therefore all of their rights are basically gone. They are property. The idea of trying to live forever, denying death by means of so-called transhumanist evolution, is childish because it denies the reality of death, so you never have to grow up and face the truth of your existence. You can just reinterpret the universe as being a kind of giant video game and you modify your body with technology so you basically never die and you live forever like an NPC video game character. By devaluing a human being's immutable characteristics, male, female, father, mother, whatever, this breaks the individual down to the sum of their parts, much like the forest. This age of the gender spectrum ideology where there's no clear defined biological binary, it is concerning because all of these hundreds of genders operate much like personalities as opposed to fixed biological realities. This means a person is just their personality and not a sacred, divine human being with rights of their own. They are just a personality. And animals also have personalities. Your dog and your cat have personalities, but they don't have human rights. And I think all of this deconstructionism of immutable characteristics is designed to strip away rights. This is why it always bugs me with these science fiction stories that present this concept of an enlightened future where we've evolved beyond the physical body. We've merged with machines to obtain so-called perfection. Because nothing about the foundational ideas about this concept are in any way clever, sophisticated, or even original. They might go on and on about how concepts like gods and religions and spirituality are primitive and archaic, but transhumanist beliefs are rooted in religious thinking and the religion of scientism. Just as communism is the religion of the state, transhumanists don't want to die, so they wish to create heaven on earth and to evolve to become their own god. They cannot conceive of anything bigger than the material. This world is all there is to them, and scientism is the religion by which they can achieve utopia. The issue I have with these kinds of concepts is that they come from the position of the rejection of death, the fundamental lack of acceptance that we must die, the cycle of life. For this is what makes us human. But the transhumanist wants to cheat death. They want to avoid it at all costs. Take that concept a step further, right? If death is the worst possible thing to happen to a person, then ask this. Why should I have to die? Then work back from there. One can ask, why should I experience pain, rejection, heartache, disappointment, sadness, loneliness, offense? Well, good news. I don't have to. I can live in a kind of video game life in a sort of metaverse simulation and control my reality like a god. I therefore will never be challenged. I will never have to overcome anything. I will never have to face the reality of difficulties and obstacles in my life. I therefore never have to accept responsibilities and I will never have to die. I therefore live in a state of arrested development where everything is okay all the time and I'm always comfortable. I never have to develop as an individual so I remain in a childlike state forever. I never have to grow up, and if I live as a child, then someone will always be my parent, and that parent will be, drumroll, the technocrat, your government, the state, the despot, the authoritarian.
And that is the reason why transhumanism is so similar to the totalitarian ideology of communism. It will lead to the undermining of the individual, the surrendering of rights, and the state attempts to become God and the ultimate and final authority in people's lives. I don't think it's a good idea that our popular culture tries to make out that human beings are in need of fixing and that the very things that make us who we are as individuals are somehow irrelevant. Look, this isn't a bad episode of science fiction, don't get me wrong, but the episode's conclusion probably wouldn't bother me so much if it were not for the fact that we're currently witnessing the birth of the normalization of crazy ideas like transhumanism in the real world, and I don't believe it will be for the betterment of our society or our species. I believe it will be for our enslavement, which is why it's important to counter this kind of thinking by making it clear that spiritual people already believe that we have arrived. We do not need any technological intervention or modification to enhance us such that we live forever. We already know we are spiritual beings living in human bodies, and we do not deny any aspect of the reality of the immutable characteristics of those bodies and our individual identity, because we believe our bodies are sacred. If you're a Christian, for example, you believe you were created in God's image. Regardless, our bodies are not just shells, vessels, or biological machines and flesh suits for our consciousness. In this physical realm, we live as human beings with human souls, and we have human rights that are inalienable. They are not given to us and taken away by the government. They came from God. The danger of transhumanism, the danger of transhumanism is that it reshapes humanity into something that isn't God's image, and therefore it defaces humanity so that our inalienable God-given rights can be stripped away because we are reduced to being synthetic humans, part biological and part machine, and therefore as different to actual organic human beings as an animal species, which means we become reduced to being treated like cattle. But we have souls, and souls do not die. Our bodies die, and that is the truth of our existence. Mortal bodies, eternal souls. So when Gordon asks the alien, what is immortality like? Well, in truth, she couldn't possibly know because her transhumanism has trapped her soul inside her physical body where it is unable to truly transcend to eternal life. Transhumanism attempts to keep the body alive forever in this realm. This is the imprisonment of the human soul. We are the product of God and God's natural creation. We must therefore remain true to that design by remaining natural and organic. Death is a part of life. To truly experience a full year, for example, you must go through all of the seasons. The same is true of life. To truly live is to experience all of its stages, birth, life, and death.